It's time for the greatest fight ever known to man. In one corner, we have the Neanderthals, built like tanks with powerful muscles and a knack for close quarters combat. In the other corner, we have you, an innovative Homo sapien, armed with advanced tools and clever strategies. So what happens when brute strength meets cunning intelligence? Who will win? And how is it possible that you might almost certainly lose? Contrary to the image of the bumbling and dumb caveman that we see in shows like the Caveman series and Flintstones, the Neanderthals were actually extremely formidable creatures, so much so that the average human stands very little chance of winning a fight against them. One huge reason for this boils down to their anatomy. To understand why you would lose badly in a fist fight, let's start with their skeletal system. Unlike what movies and cartoons show, Neanderthals had a skeletal structure that set them apart from modern humans in several fascinating ways. This is because they were built for strength and survival in harsh environments, and their bones quite literally reflect that. Unlike us, the Neanderthal skulls were longer and flatter, with a low receding forehead and a pronounced brow ridge. Their brains were slightly larger, on average about 1,500 cubic centimeters or 91 cubic inches, but they were shaped differently. We will dive into how this would affect your fight in a bit. In contrast to their physique, Homo sapiens have rounder skulls with higher foreheads and smaller brow ridges, giving us that modern, intelligent look. While our brains average around 1,300 cubic centimeters, 80 cubic inches, they're more efficiently wired. So brain size alone doesn't make Neanderthals smarter. Moving away from the head, the Neanderthals had stronger jaws with a forward projecting face. Perfect for biting down hard on tough foods, or in this case, on you, as you try to get the caveman in a headlock. The headlock wouldn't even work as they didn't have much of a chin, which is one of their trademarks. Homo sapiens, on the other hand, are built for headlocks. After all, we have more delicate jaws and a well-defined chin, which helps in speech and chewing softer foods, but sadly not in a fight. To give you an idea, if the two species were chewing through a steak, Neanderthals could probably tear through it like a caveman, pun intended, while Homo sapiens would politely cut it into bite-sized pieces with their tools. Moving down to the torso, Neanderthals had a wider, barrel-shaped rib cage, helping them generate more body heat in colder climates. This also gave them a stocky, sturdy look, while Homo sapiens have a narrower, more tapered rib cage, better suited for running long distances and chasing down prey over vast terrains. You can think of Neanderthals as built like a heavy-duty SUV, great for rugged, tough terrain. Homo sapiens, on the other hand, are more like sports cars, sleeker and made for endurance. What do you think would fare better in a collision? Let us know in the comments below. Moving on, when it comes to shoulders and arms, Neanderthals had shoulder blades positioned differently, allowing them to swing their arms with greater force, which was ideal for close-range hunting and for winning fights. Their arms were thicker and more muscular, especially in the forearms, due to years of heavy manual labor and weapon use. In fact, studies show many Neanderthal forearms were bent due to the amount of their muscles exerted on them. On the other hand, Homo sapiens shoulders are more flexible, allowing for better throwing mechanics. We're built for distance and accuracy with projectiles, whether that's a spear or a basketball. But when it comes to throwing hands, you might have to give this one to our ancestors. But not everything is against us, as we actually have a height advantage. See, Neanderthals had shorter, wider pelvises and legs, making them more stable on uneven ground and better suited for conserving body heat. On average, Neanderthals were generally shorter and stockier than modern humans. In fact, the average height for Neanderthal males is estimated to be around 5 feet and 5 inches, or 165 centimeters, while females averaged around 5 feet and 1 inch or 155 centimeters. This is because their robust build was an adaptation to the cold climates of Ice Age Europe. See, the shorter stature, combined with a wider chest and pelvis, helped conserve body heat, which, as you know, was crucial. Studies also show that their limbs were also shorter in proportion to their bodies compared to Homo sapiens. You can thank Allen's rule for this advantage. For those who don't know, the Allen rule is an ecological principle that states that endothermic animals in colder climates tend to have shorter limbs to minimize heat loss. Moving on to the legs. The Neanderthals, with their thick leg bones, suggest they had incredible strength and were designed for power over long distances. 
Homo sapiens, however, have longer, leaner legs and a more streamlined pelvis, making us perfect for endurance running. This was crucial, as it gave us an edge in hunting by tiring prey over long distances. In terms of practicality, if you got in a foot race instead of a fight, Neanderthals might dominate in the short sprint like a powerlifter bursting out of the gate. But fret not, because as a Homo sapien, you would slowly catch up and outlast them in a marathon. One thing you should be afraid of, though, is their hands. This is because they were wider and more robust, with thick fingers that gave Neanderthals a stronger grip for tasks like making stone tools and handling heavy objects. Homo sapiens, however, have more nimble and delicate hands, allowing for more fine motor skills, crucial for detailed toolmaking, art, and handling smaller objects. In a competition, there is no debate, a Neanderthal would win an arm wrestling match, but in a game of Jenga or painting tiny models, Homo sapiens would dominate. With that said, what about their muscles? How would they fare in a fight? Size and muscle structure. As mentioned before, in terms of size, Neanderthals were shorter but stockier, with males averaging around 5'5 or 165 centimeters, but weighing around 143 pounds or 65 kilograms. Yep, these homonyms were built like solid blocks of muscle, but that wasn't all because their bones were denser, making them heavier for their size. Some researchers even suggest that their bones were twice the density of ours. With that said, think back to the point of bending their forearm, and you'll begin to see just how insane their strength was. Homo sapiens, on the other hand, are generally taller and leaner, with modern males averaging around 5'9", or 175 centimeters, and 165 pounds, or 75 kilograms. Our lighter frame allows for faster, more efficient movement, so in terms of athletes, you can imagine Neanderthals as bodybuilders of the human family and Homo sapiens as the distance runners, both physically impressive, just in different ways. The Neanderthals were also incredibly muscular, especially in their upper bodies. As mentioned before, their massive forearms were much larger than those of modern humans, likely developed through activities like spear thrusting when hunting large animals such as mammoths. This would have given them a powerful grip and striking ability, making them formidable in close combat. Their pectoral muscles were a whole new story, as they were about twice the size of those found in modern humans, enhancing their upper body strength. This advantage would have made them more effective in both offense and defense, excelling in grappling and delivering devastating blows. Neanderthals also had thick neck muscles to support their heavier skulls. This not only protected vital areas like the arteries and spine, but also made it much harder for an opponent to apply chokes or secure a headlock in grappling situations. These physical attributes combined made Neanderthals physically dominant, especially in close quarters combat. Perhaps the craziest discovery on the topic of strength is the fact that Neanderthals are genetically stronger than us. But how? Genetics. Well, the answer is quite simple. Neanderthals possessed genetic adaptations that contributed to their impressive strength and robust physiques setting them apart from Homo sapiens. Studies show that key genes associated with muscle development and physical power, such as the ACTN3 gene, played a significant role in this strength disparity. The ACTN3 gene encodes a protein found in fast twitch muscle fibers, which are crucial for explosive strength and power activities. As you would expect, Neanderthals had a higher frequency of beneficial variants of this gene leading to greater muscle mass and strength compared to modern humans. Not to mention, variations in the myostatin gene, MSTN, also contributed to Neanderthals' muscularity. Myostatin is a protein that regulates muscle growth, and as such, lower levels, or dysfunctional variants, can lead to increased muscle mass. Now, here's where it gets interesting. As research suggests that Neanderthals may have had adaptations that resulted in lower myostatin activity, promoting greater muscle development. Even their larger skeletal structure, the thicker bones and denser joints, were likely supported by these genetic factors, enabling them to handle more significant physical stress. While Homo sapiens possess genes for strength and endurance, they genetically have a more lean and efficient muscular structure, optimized for endurance rather than raw power. The genetic divergence is simple because of the evolutionary paths each species took, influencing their physical capabilities and survival strategies. So agreed, they are physically overwhelming, but you're smarter, which should help you win the fight, right? 
Let's see what happens when the fight moves beyond brute force. Stay tuned to find out. Quick pause. If you're enjoying this journey through the prehistoric world, don't forget to like and subscribe. More than 97% of our viewers watch without subscribing, and we'd love to have you join our tribe. It would make all the difference. So, is it done? Great. Thanks a ton. Cognitive Advantage when comparing cognitive adaptations and tool use in a fight between Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens, the battle shifts from raw strength to strategy, creativity, and adaptability. As we know by now, Neanderthals were physically stronger, but lucidly for you, Homo sapiens' cognitive advantages are very crucial. See, modern humans have more developed frontal lobes, which are responsible for complex problem-solving, planning, and innovation. In a fight, this ability would translate to better tactics and decision-making, allowing Homo sapiens to exploit weaknesses in Neanderthal combat strategies. For example, Homo sapiens could employ tactics such as flanking maneuvers, deception, or using the environment to their advantage. Essentially, our brains allow you to think ahead in combat, using tactics and outsmarting your opponents. In contrast, Neanderthals may likely rely more on brute force and instinct. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room. Tools. I'm very sure from the beginning of this video you've already decided that a gun or a blade would easily level the playing field and give you an advantage. And to an extent, you are right. Tool use actually plays a pivotal role in giving Homo sapiens a decisive edge over Neanderthals in any potential conflict, particularly in terms of versatility, innovation, and efficiency. While both species are adept tool users, the quality, variety, and application of Homo sapiens tools far surpassed those of Neanderthals. Neanderthals certainly had tools, including stone axes, scrapers, and thrusting spears, primarily designed for close-range hunting and combat. These tools were effective for their survival needs, particularly in hunting large animals like mammoths. However, Neanderthal tools were often more rudimentary and less diverse. Their spears were typically designed for thrusting, which meant they had to get close to their prey or opponent, which put them in direct danger. In a fight, this reliance on close quarters weapons, while useful given their strength, ultimately will limit their tactical flexibility. In contrast, Homo sapiens have created more advanced and specialized weapons, including projectile spears, bows and arrows, and slings, which allow them to strike from a distance. For this video, we are not exploring the modern weapons of today, as there would be no fight if they were used. With projectile weapons, Homo sapiens could attack from afar, wearing down or injuring Neanderthals without exposing themselves to their opponent's superior strength in close quarters. Essentially, distance-based weapons make the fight more about strategy than brute force, and Homo sapiens excelled in this type of combat. Taking things deeper, we see Homo sapiens' innovation in toolmaking was driven by their superior cognitive abilities. Because of this, they employed a more refined method of crafting, known as blade technology, which involved making long, thin, sharp-edged blades from stone. These blades were not only sharper and more effective for cutting or piercing, but also allowed for the creation of multi-purpose tools such as knives that could serve various functions in both combat and daily life. Homo sapiens also had an edge in their use of materials. While Neanderthals mostly used stone tools, Homo sapiens incorporated bone, antler, and wood into their toolmaking, allowing for a wider array of tools and weapons. This versatility enabled them to adapt quickly to different environments and challenges, including combat situations, something we will dive into in a bit. In terms of overall effectiveness, Homo sapiens also mastered the art of creating tools in groups leading to more organized and coordinated weapon manufacturing. This social cooperation not only increased the quantity of weapons they could produce, but also allowed for the sharing of knowledge, further refining their tools over time. In a combat scenario, Neanderthals might rely on brute strength and direct, forceful weapon strikes, but Homo sapiens' ability to innovate and create better tools, particularly those allowing for ranged attacks and more efficient close combat weapons, gives them a significant advantage. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about the effects of where you are fighting. You'll be shocked how much of an impact it will have. Environment. Although you would imagine its effects to be minor, the environment would play a crucial role in shaping the dynamics of a fight between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Influencing everything from combat tactics to physical endurance, this could be the factor that decides who wins or not. 
This is because Neanderthals were built for cold, harsh climates and, as such, have the advantage in frigid conditions. Their stocky bodies and shorter limbs help conserve heat, making them more suited for colder regions like Ice Age Europe. In an environment with extreme cold, their robust frames would provide better insulation, allowing them to fight longer and endure harsher climates. Not to mention, dense forests or snowy plains where close-range hunting is necessary would favour Neanderthal strength and close combat skills, giving them an advantage when brute force is key. On the other hand, Homo sapiens are far more adaptable to different environments, so you do have a chance to win. This is because our leaner, taller bodies are designed for endurance and efficiency in a variety of climates, especially in warmer or open landscapes like savannas or grasslands. Here, our longer limbs aid in cooling and increase our mobility, so in open environments where Neanderthal strength is less effective, we could use our ranged weapons to engage from a distance, avoiding the need for direct close quarters combat where Neanderthals thrive. Essentially, the terrain would significantly influence the fight and determine which species gains the upper hand. But here's the new question. Why is this hypothetical fight important? Importance. Although it might seem silly, this hypothetical fight between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals holds significance because it represents the broader story of human evolution, competition, and survival. Exploring this scenario helps us understand how two closely related species, both physically and mentally equipped for survival, might have interacted in the past. While Neanderthals were physically stronger and adapted for cold, harsh environments, Homo sapiens had a unique combination of cognitive abilities, tool use, and social structures that ultimately helped them outlast Neanderthals. Understanding this hypothetical conflict offers insight into how these differences in strength, intelligence, and adaptability may have played a role in the eventual dominance of Homo sapiens. Not to mention, studying Neanderthal's strength is important for a few key reasons. First off, it sheds light on the biological diversity among human species and helps us appreciate the physical variations that existed within the genus Homo. As we know, Neanderthals were exceptionally robust, with massive muscles, thick bones, and dense frames, which allowed them to thrive in environments where survival required sheer physical power. By studying their strength, we gain insight into how different evolutionary pressures shaped the physical adaptations necessary for survival in specific climates and conditions. Neanderthals' strength also informs us about their daily lives, how they hunted, defended themselves, and interacted with their environment. Their reliance on close-range hunting and their ability to grapple with large prey like mammoths offer a window into the challenges they faced. Finally, understanding Neanderthal's physical power and how it compares to modern humans helps scientists reconstruct how interactions between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals might have unfolded. This includes not only potential conflicts, but also cooperation, interbreeding, and cultural exchanges. Essentially, the study of Neanderthal's strength helps us appreciate their role in shaping the broader human story. Crazy as it might seem, you winning a fight against a Neanderthal is completely up to chance. After all, they have everything they need to beat even the most trained fighters of today. And while our weapons have made it easy for us to boast in the face of a species that is not around to defend itself, it is important to look back and see where we began so we can understand where we are going and why we are who we are. But what do you think? Would you be able to beat a caveman? And who would win in the fight of Mike Tyson versus a Neanderthal? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious.